What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Pippin Henderson and today we're checking out Cakewalk by BandLab. Don't forget to like and subscribe, click that notification button so you're informed of all my new videos. I thought we would take a very beginner's approach as I haven't really had chance to check this out myself really with any kind of in-depth. I know this is really the accumulation or development of what was called Cakewalk Sonar. That was a software that I used to use quite a lot back in the day when it was Cakewalk Sonar Platinum. I spent hundreds of pounds including all the plugins that you had to get, well you didn't have to get, but plugins that they offered you as extras. I must have spent so much money and now I've sort of come back into the arena of recording again and I noticed that Cakewalk is now free and it's by a company called BandLab and it's something you can literally go over to their website right now, download it, it's completely free, maybe that's a good idea and then you can follow along with what I'm doing here. This, this tutorial is specifically designed for beginners though, so if you have any kind of experience with this kind of thing, this is probably not for you. I do have other tutorials on my channel that you may be interested in, but today we're completely going to be focusing on how to set yourself up within Cakewalk and how to get started with your first project. Okay, so once you download it and you install it, the first thing you're going to do once you open up the program is you're gonna to get to this Let's Get Started screen. And there's a few options to go over, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. We've got a basic, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a project within Cakewalk, and it's gonna have very basic elements to it. So it might have a couple of audio tracks, it might have a couple of MIDI tracks already set up for you, it might have a bus track. If you're not sure what that is, I will go into that later, but I do have tutorials on these sorts of things as well. But basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a sample template to help get you started. So that's basic. And again, we've got four tracks, 16 track. We have an empty project here, which is gonna be completely blank. It's not gonna have any tracks, any bus tracks, or anything in that template. So it's completely empty. And that's what we're gonna be starting with today. So I can, really just go from scratch how to set up. So we're gonna click empty project, and as you can see, it's come up, it's completely blank. Now, this main window in the middle here, this is where all your recorded audio or MIDI will be shown. On the left here, this is where we're gonna create our tracks and our MIDI tracks. And it's really easy to do, but first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a few options in the preferences to help you get set up inside Cakewalk. So you can easily get to the preferences by clicking the P on your keyboard. The first thing you're gonna be greeted with is the audio devices. Now these are what your inputs are going to be and what your outputs are going to be. Now your inputs will be, these will be things specifically to your audio recording such as a microphone. Now your output drivers will be what you are going to use in order to hear that recorded music back. So it will be generally, it will, it's going to be your sound card. So that is what you would click there. As you can see, I've got my microphone. This is just a standard USB microphone and I've got my speakers. The next is going to be driver settings. This is pretty much exactly the same thing. In the playback timing master, you're going to want to put your speakers or the device that you are using to listen back to your music. In the recorded timing master, you're going to want to put your microphone or whatever it is you are using to record your audio there. And then we have a bunch of other settings beneath it such as audio bit depth, um, sampling rate and mixing latency. Now this is fairly important. Latency is going to distinguish the delay between your recording input and the time it will take for that to record and play back to you, or the time it will take to get that sound into your computer and then played back to you, especially when you are monitoring your own sound, specifically with your vocals or your guitar or whatever it is. If you are monitoring through Cakewalk, and there's a button, I'll show you that a bit later on, if you have a guitar track set up, for instance, and you have effects on that track and you enable monitoring, what it will do is allow you to hear those effects in real time. But if you're mixing latency, if your latency is too high, you'll notice a delay between you striking a note on your keyboard or on your guitar or whatever, and the time it takes for that to be replayed back to you. 
generally speaking, you want that this buffer size here, you want it to be in the fast region or as low as possible. And you can see that displayed here in milliseconds. Now, I'm not going to mess with mine because I'm not actually going to be recording anything today. And if I was, I wouldn't be doing it with the, the devices that are selected here today. This is specifically just to show you guys. The next one down is playback and recording. Now, this is going to determine your driver mode. There's quite a few options. This may be specific to the type of sound card that you have, but generally speaking, ASIO tends to be a very good one. And this relates back to the latency issue I was just talking about. ASIO does generally tend to have a very low latency. So it's quite good for monitoring your own audio devices. But if that doesn't work, not all audio devices, not all sound cards use ASIO. So WDM slash KS or MME 32 bit tend to be a good one. Just go through the list and see which one works best for you. If your sound card doesn't support ASIO, there is a website called ASIO for all and you can search for that. It's ASIO number four and then all. And what that will do, once you download it and install it, it'll allow you to use the ASIO drivers within a recording software so you can get the benefits of the ASIO driver. So that's probably worth a try. I'm not gonna go through any of the others. That's not really important if you're just getting set up. Here in the MIDI section under devices, if you have a MIDI keyboard connected to your computer, you would see a box here and you would simply check it and you click apply and that would just tell Cakewalk that you have that device selected. Everything else really is pretty straightforward. I don't, I'm not gonna go through every single preference, but those are the general things that you need to know in order to get set up quickly inside Cakewalk. So we can go and we can cancel out of here now. The next thing then, once you've got set up and you've got your input devices selected and everything else, you're gonna to wanna to start making music. And in order to do that, you need to create tracks. Now these are selected here in the add track. It's the little plus button and it's going to bring up a little box. And here you can select between audio and MIDI. So in the audio here, we've got your audio input device or your microphone or whatever it is you're using. You could select it here. Then we have record enable. I will go into that more in depth once the track is actually created. But essentially what it means is that the track is armed and ready to record the second that you create the track. So you could have that enabled. Input monitoring refers back to what I was saying, whether you can monitor the sound that comes straight from that track. So any effects you have applied there, you'd be able to hear. You can have that selected. I'm not going to do that because we'll end up hearing a delay. So I'm going to leave that unselected. And here you can see how many tracks you'd like to create. So let's just say two and we'll click OK, and there we go. And it's going to create those two tracks. Let's go through some of the settings that you're going to find here. So up the top, we've got mute. It's fairly self-explanatory. We've got solo. That's just going to solo that one track. And this is the arm button. So when this is selected, it means that that track is armed and ready to record. It doesn't mean that it is recording. It means that that track is ready to record. In order to start recording, you'd have to come up here and select the record button or you'd press R on your keyboard, which would do the same thing. So be cautious of how many of these you have selected on your tracks, because once you get quite a few, just be aware of what it is you've got selected on each track, because you don't want to re-record over a track that you've already recorded. So just be wary of that. Make sure that you've only got the one track that you want to record armed. And over here is the input echo. Now this is your monitoring button. This is the button that's going to allow you to hear back what you are inputting. So if you have a microphone and you want to hear your own voice back to you, this is the button that you would select. And this is the effects window. If you click the little plus button, it's going to give you a little drop down menu. And in here is going to give you all the effects that come bundled with Cakewalk. And a lot of these are exactly the same as the ones that I had when I purchased my Cakewalk Sonar Platinum for hundreds of pounds and it's coming with all the really good ones and these are things that I'll go through in other tutorials in, a, in future videos but you can also right click in here and it's the same thing. Going further down we have the volume here this is just 
exactly what it says. It's the volume. It just <laughs> increases it or decreases it. The pan, whether you want it more to the left or more to the right or into the center. Gain, that's additional input into your track. So if you're experiencing the volume not being as high as you'd like, there is the gain here that you can up in order to get some extra volume. It is quite good practice to have this slightly turned down. It's going to reduce the possibility of your track clipping or having artifacts, but that is something that we can go into a bit later on. Further down then, we have your input. This is exactly what we'd already decided in the preferences, but here you can specifically determine what input that track will use. So if you have multiple inputs, you can select them here. And if you have a device that uses mono and stereo, you can select either the left or right channel, which would obviously record it in mono. And then you have the option to select stereo as well. And that this is my uh, microphone. And the output here, this is what this track is being routed to. So here it's being routed to the master, which is refers to the master bus. Generally speaking, in layman's terms, what a bus is, is, a, is another track that your input tracks here are routed to, and then this will be routed to your sound card. So the output on this master bus is the sound card. And you can create bus tracks and vocal bus tracks, and then you can have global effects that influence the entire vocal range rather than just singling out one vocal track. So for instance, if these two tracks that we've just created are vocal tracks, we can come up to the name here, double click it, rename it vocal one and vocal two. And then in the bus pane here, we can right click, insert stereo bus. We can rename this vocal bus. And if you uh, hover the mouse until the cursor changes, what we can do is we can move it up the list and have it just below the master bus. And what we can do then is in our output, in our vocal one, so we can come down here and we can have it routed to the vocal bus. And again, in this one, vocal bus. And what that means is whatever audio we have going through here will also be routed to the vocal bus. So it means that whatever effect we put on this, such as an EQ, for instance, mess about with some EQ and just like that, it will affect both vocal tracks. And that's good if you are grouping specific instruments or specific audio tracks together, such as vocals or guitars, or even a drum bus, if you are recording live drums. It also means you can uh, do individual effects as well on each track, but you can apply global effects as well. That's always handy to know. Once you're happy and you're ready to record something, remember to arm the track, and then you simply come over here, click record, and away you go. And there you go, you can see my voice recording there, and I'm sure if we stop it and play it back, chord, and away you go. And there you go, you can see my voice recording there. There we go, it's as simple as that. So I hope you guys have found this useful. Clearly this is a very layman's beginner's guide to getting set up, we're gonna go more in depth with this. I will open up Cakewalk and show you some more of the features as we go along, but I want you to really let you guys have the grasp of getting to grips with the very raw basics so you're confident going forward and you're not confused over what buttons do what or whatever. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I am more than happy to answer those questions for you or bring them up in a future video. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that notification button so you're informed of all my new videos. Again, thank you guys so much for coming back and watching. Thank you all for carrying on supporting the channel. Uh, it's remained at around four and a half thousand subscribers now. I'm absolutely blown away that you guys are still there supporting the channel. So thank you guys so much. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, there's gonna be plenty more tutorials to come in the future. And once again, Thanks very much and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.